uh, part one, music. Part two, interviews of our speakers. Part three, more music. So part one, music, four songs. The first song is from the 2019 American General Convention and a group of, Ameri a group of sisters, Canadian mostly and a, an American, will sing for us in the dawning. Uh, secondly, uh, a song from the German Bible Students hymn book, Zion Lieder, uh, sung by Sister Violetta Shegedevich. Um, the title is, In the Morning It Will Be Light. She sings it in German, and there'll be a translation on the screen. Number three from Canada, a quartet from Vancouver, Sarah Kopak, uh, Ashley Coletta, Nathan Coletta, and Mart Marta Litwin. Uh, a th thousand years. Now, it, that's the title. That, that, they're not going to song. It's not that long. No, it, don't, don't, uh, don't, go, don't run away. Um, the song is only about you know, two and a half minutes. Uh, number four will be a, a song sung in one of the major languages of the country of India. Uh, in the south of India is the state of Kerala. And this will be song, sung in their regional language. And that is Malayaham. A group of our brethren who now live in Bellevue, which is right across the lake, right across Lake Washington from Seattle. They come from Kerala originally, and they will sing in their native language. You'll recognize the song. So let's enjoy the first songs of praise. And this is not to be passive. If you want to join in, just do so. And um, I'm going to guess that most of you are not out in public at the moment. So there's no chance you'd be arrested if you start singing out. So um, you can sing. sing, sing from the heart and join us.
Thank you, all of you. Uh, I enjoyed it. I hope you all did too. Now we're going to take a break from the music and we're going to chat, unfortunately, briefly with our five speakers. I'm going to start with Brother Homer Montague. Um, can we bring Brother Homer's picture up also, or better yet, take my picture off and let's put Brother Homer up there. Brother Homer, can you hear me? You may have to unmute. I can hear you. Okay, great. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Because, uh, you know, we're talking across the country. Uh, how are you this evening? I thank the Lord. Doing very well. Thanks. By his okay. grace. All is by his grace. Uh, now we can see you. That's even better. Um, what was the first time you visit, visited Seattle? Oh, gee. I don't know. It's been a long, long time. Uh, back in the, I guess, late 80s, maybe. 80s okay. sometime. Yeah, late 80s. Was it raining when you came? Probably. <laughs> Did you come by yourself? No, my dear wife, Sister Beverly, accompanied me all the time, wherever I went. So I'm sure I did not come alone. You know, I, I knew the answer to that. And I knew it was going to be a we. And uh, you and Sister Beverly were one of the greatest examples that I can think of as, of a couple, a consecrated couple who always traveled together. That you were such a great example. But I want to ask you, how has life been since Sister Beverly passed for you? I am thankful. I've, asked, I've been asked that question from time to time. And I had occasion to share with someone who lost a mate some time ago. And I said, I trust that Sister Beverly and your mate are both looking down on us, encouraging us to hurry up and complete our course. <laughs> So I've Excellent. been doing well. Excellent. And um, I, I've been curious. I want to know a little bit more about how you grew up. Um, where did you grow up and um, where'd you go to school? What was the family situation? Well, I lived in New Haven, Connecticut until I moved to New York in 1961. I went to school there. I did my undergraduate work at a teacher's college. In, I got in my, New Haven? Yeah, New Haven, yeah. And okay. then I got my master's at the University of Connecticut, who's better known for their basketball teams now. But uh, Oh, yes, UConn. UConn, there you go. <laughs> Huskies. <laughs> Huskies, there you go. Don't ask me how I know all that stuff. <laughs> so um, does, does that mean that uh, as a youngster, did you meet with the uh, New Haven class? From time to time, yes. Uh, you know, my father is, um, actually got the truth in 1923 in Jamaica, British West Indies. Wow. And uh, he and my wife, me and my mom came here and had a family. And we used to have meetings in the home. But from time to time, we would meet with the uh, New Haven Bible students. And other times, we would have meetings at home. And sometimes would even come to New York because I had a, a special aunt that you probably knew of. Some oh, of them called so her Monty, and we would come to New York and would have meetings with some of the brethren in New York. So I've always been a traveler. Okay, Sister Monty, I remember her well. Now, were you related at all to Brother Graves? No, I was not. I okay. was not. Because that was another one who was. Early as a youngster, he was on our radar. He would come to the dawn and help out, help my dad with typesetting. I will tell you that he stayed in our house back in 19, during the war, around 1941, 1942, to work in New Haven because there was employment there. And then he eventually went back to New York where he was from originally. Yes, all, all beautiful friends. I remember them from my uh, days as a youngster. Now you have a, you had a fabled career as a, as an educator and an administrator, a principal, and uh, I all often wondered, as you look at that, 
Um, what did you see change a lot? And, and then take us to how does, what do you think about, you must have uh, evaluated hundreds of teachers. You must have tried to make them better teachers. What did you learn from that that you could apply to the Bible students? How can we do better? You're a well, professional. I, I will tell you, I will give you, and I am overjoyed so far with your convention. Because my view is that studies, and, and you know, we had a lot of sisters already featured in various uh, positions, singing and so forth and so on. But some of the brethren that I know will say, and they're speakers, and they say, you know, I got this talk based upon a study that we had in our class. And because I believe that every joint supply it, rarely do I give discourses outside of uh, when I travel. We have all studies. We have many, many uh, uh, studies throughout the week. And believe it or not, most of them are sisters and it's highly interactive. So if you have interaction, every joint supply it. Very sweet thought. And I regret that, well, no, I don't regret. I regret that this moment has ended, but we've got three days ahead of us. That's the good part. So I got a couple more questions and I will catch up with you. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna move next uh, to down south to Orlando. Brother Mike Balco, are you there? Uh, yes, I am, Brother Tim. I'm here. Um, Orlando, are you under any weather alerts at the moment? Are you expecting a typhoon or anything like that? Uh, no, we are not. We, we've had a volatile season so far. I think they're up to what, 10? Earliest they've ever gotten that far in the uh, naming. But we've missed the last one. It, of course, it went over and, and, and the, the folks there in Louisiana got hit hard. We know what it's like. Several years ago, Charlie... I didn't have power for 16 days and three more hurricanes came a total about 25 days without power. But so a couple last year or so we had one that wasn't as bad. We lost power for a few days. You know, so, we, we, so far so good. You live in such a beautiful area with very ideal weather almost all the time. So we like to razz you, you <laughs> Thank know, about the bad right. days. It's like the rain in, in Seattle. I understand. So um, how did you end up in Florida? You grew up in Pennsylvania. Well, I'll tell you, um, after graduating college, I, I moved to the Pocono Mountains in eastern, northeastern Pennsylvania, and I attended the Allentown Ecclesia. And often we went into the dawn for dawn day and so forth, and uh, uh, a little too far to go for a daily meeting uh, on Sunday, so we went to Allentown, which was still about 45 minutes to an hour drive. In the winter, a little bit further, because I was actually in the mountains, but I went there because, um, uh, you know, uh, I went to uh, that area and after the blizzard of 78 or 9, we had seven feet of snow at my house in the Poconos. I didn't work for three weeks. That's when the Delaware River and everything froze, no heating oil. And I said, go south, young man. <laughs> so uh, my, my wife, Vicki, had never seen snow. And so we were there until 1980. So we got married in 74. 1980, we decided we, we did almost one more year. And I said, I'm going south. I interviewed down here, got several job offers, and here I am since 1980. So, Were uh, you a teacher long, at that point? I was a speech-language pathologist with a master's degree. Okay. Yes, now, does that mean you're in a school? I, I had seven years in a hospital with stroke patients. My specialty is brain injury. And I worked 42 years as a speech-language pathologist. Okay. I mentored many, many interns, uh, uh, and supervised uh, many and was on, on national and state committees and best practices and so forth. So I had a little bit of experience in, in that supervisory capacity. When I think of a brethren like yourself who, uh, who deal with pathologies and, and people and you work with them, uh, to me it's kingdom work. It's just beautiful. I, I'm sure you thought uh, many times that, that that's what the kingdom was gonna be all about. I think so. You know, what, what got me in the field, I had a, a neighbor who was a mechanic. All he wanted to do was fix cars his whole life. He got drafted, went to Vietnam. He came back, couldn't walk, couldn't talk, was in, a, you know, just in a wheelchair, had everything done from him. And I said, I want to get in a field where I can help 
make a difference. I know the kingdom will bring the blessings to all those, but just to, you know, just to do something to help out. So, you know, when you hear a, a child say their first words or a stroke patient recognize their family and be able to start to function back in their uh, society, it was, it was a rewarding, it was a blessing. I received many blessings. Hopefully I imparted some help to those I came in contact with. Uh, I'm sure of that. Um, you retired now? Yes, uh, 2015, I retired. Okay, and how is Sister Vicki rehabbing with her hip? Okay, she had, in her hip was fine. The surgery was terrific. She had, she had a hematoma in her right thigh. So she's getting some uh, physical therapy for that. And it's, it's improving. I don't know, it's coming along very well. She's going three days a week. And uh, how's she her mom? Virtual. Uh, okay, we, we uh, see her as much as we can. She's about two miles from here. Jeanette is, uh, she said to bring her love. She's yes. coming along. Yeah, she's coming along well, Brother Tim. Okay, Michael, we're glad to have you as part of our convention. I'm going to stay in Orlando and move over to Brother Jerry Wessel. All right. Thank you, Brother. Lord bless. Brother Jerry. Yes, Brother Tim. Good to be with you. I'm so thank thankful you. You, didn't, you didn't pick me first because uh, I was so moved by those pictures, the scene uh, of remembering those those one. Yes, I, I had the uh, I had the same response. Uh, I uh, I wasn't sure how I was going to start off the program, <laughs> but well, I, uh, thank you. I appreciated the reprieve, and, and then I I really liked how the brethren introduced themselves with the scriptures, and I wanted to share something with you. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, I see. I'm yeah. getting my internet connections having issues apparently, but uh, you had a scripture that you brought up that. Um, I know it was interesting that my wife found that same scripture. Let's see if I can. But anyway, it's the same one you picked. And we put it on our cards. We, we created a little card that we pass out and people we witness to or brethren that we see. But that message was so comforting. Even my wife, she loved that she wanted she she finishes furniture and she does different things with plaques and 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 she came and she prepared something and it had the jeremiah 29 11 to 13 and i was i was wow i said that's a pretty amazing verses about that comfort that the lord and what a message of hope that could be for anyone who doesn't have that so i was i was i kind of smiled but uh but when you shared that you and sister dawn so thank you okay well it I received that um, on a good get well card after my heart attack, and from a group of from a class, and it, it meant so much to me when when Jehovah there says, "I have plans for you." Yeah. I mean, that's that's so wonderful. Yeah. So, um, brother Jerry, uh, have you been to Seattle? You know, I the brethren. Uh, requested we serve a few years ago and sister josephine was uh, my mother was going through some different experiences and uh we had to decline and so we we're so much looking forward to it this year uh and that's why i said when before the meeting i was talking to sister Lori flynn i said oh almost <laughs> at least we're kind of here <laughs> yeah so no brother tim i've heard so much about uh, that the the place there and uh, especially where you are or probably more where you live because you know, you shared with us some of the, we've had a chance to fellowship at General and and uh, talk about it, but I, I, it's, it's a lovely place. I've seen photos, but no, we've not been. So um, it means that the, the friends up here haven't been exposed to you as much as some of us who have gotten to Florida and stuff. So give me a, a short history, your parents, your grandparents. Uh, my parents are uh, Leonard and uh, Josephine Wessel. And they were, my father was from in you know, Chicago, Ecclesia. Matthew and Maria Weselowski were his parents. And uh, Josephine uh, Malia was uh, Maria Malia and uh, uh, Sebastian Malia. And uh, they uh, were in the truth. They, they found the truth. And in fact, I believe the story from my grandfather and my grandmother was that on the first date, they went to see Brother Russell speak. That's where he took her. And she said, <laughs> she knew she was going to marry him because what person takes you on a date to go hear a Bible sermon? <laughs> uh, 
so that was our exposure there. Uh, so we grew up in Miami and, and you know, Brother Tim, I, was, I have a wonderful legacy in my parents because one thing that we never, we saw all the brethren. It didn't matter, divine plan, dawn, didn't matter. You know, the presence, not, didn't believe in presence, whatever. They were all in our home. And, you know, of course we were in Miami, Brother Tim, so everybody was escaping the North and coming to Miami. And they all had to go through our home. Just like in New York, you go through the Loops home. They were going through the Wessel home in Miami. But And I know that they must have been okay with my parents because uh, they kept coming back. You know, we'd see them year in, year out. But I had no idea about any of these different ideas of the brethren until I moved up to upstate New York and was now visiting, you know, living in the Northeast and attending the different ecclesias. And I had no idea. So what a wonderful legacy. If you, if you love the Lord and you uh, were in the truth, you were welcome in our home. So that was my legacy my, that was left for me. It's, it's a great legacy. And um, I smile because um, uh, you're, a you're Polish and you're Italian. And, you know, one of my best friends was Paul Malley. And Paul Malley would say to me, he'd say, how come you like Italian food so much and you're Polish? And I would say to him, Paul, if I weren't Polish, I'd be Italian. <laughs> so anyway, we, we had that going. So we are so happy that you're part of our convention. I think we gave you three assignments. So you're going to be busy and... Um, and I'm going to tell you something. You'll be back. Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, Brother Len Grice. There I am. Are you there? I'm okay, here. Brother Len. Uh, Len Grice. Your initials are LG. Yeah. Now, I, I got an issue with you, brother. Uh, my phone says LG. My, com my TV says LG. My computer monitor says LG. My refrigerator says LG. This is a huge worldwide corporation worth billions of dollars. <laughs> so I asked somebody from Phoenix, is the LG corporation connected with Len Grice, LG? And the answer was absolutely yes. Oh. He said that LG corporation was started in a garage by two young men in Jackson, Michigan. <laughs> and that Len Grice owns most of the corporation. <laughs> Now, I want to know, how did you, why did you keep this from us until now? <laughs> well, I, I was afraid that I'd have to set up a foundation for everyone. <laughs> well, that's a good story, Tim. Unfortunately, you got the wrong LG. Mm. Are you saying this is fake news? <laughs> More or less, yes. More or less. Okay, so that leads me to the fact that you are an editor in a sense of, of the Herald. Uh, you are responsible for the center section? Uh, yeah, I, I actually, after Brother Carl Hagensick passed away, Brother Michael Nakora took over as managing editor and then he passed away. Uh, so I've been uh, as a managing editor to planning of the issues, uh, coordinating it with all the other four editors. And then I also, am an editor and I do the middle section, which is the news and views and the today and prophecy. Those are what's yeah. under so, so my question is, how, what do you use for your sources and how do you know what to take and what to disbelieve because it's unbelievable out there? Yes, it is, Tim. That's a good question. We, we talk about that a lot. And fortunately, I have four other good, very good editors that are uh, skeptics. And so they always challenge things that may be uh, questionable. And I've tried to develop over the years a source, sources of information that are neither far right or far left, but uh, would be neutral and that would report the facts. You know, I, I, was, I worked in the information industry for corporations and dealt with a lot of information. I, you know, talked to reporters as part of my responsibility and newspapers. And so uh, a lot of it's just understanding how they work and how the facts work and finding sources that you can rely on that report factual things without huge editorial bias, because it doesn't matter what we read. 
a person that writes an article, even a person that writes a talk, a discourse, has a particular point of view that influences how they present it, the language they use. So it's a matter of trying to determine whether something is, uh, is true or questionable and what the sources are from which uh, it derives. And I always try to go as far to the original sources as I can for things and not report uh, areas where uh, things may be questionable because they're filtered through a number of uh, sources. Okay, well, uh, we, to tell you the truth, when I see LG on my phone, I smile and I think of you and I think of all the good things you've done for the brethren, uh, coordinating conventions, your work at international and all those things. So um, we appreciate all your good service. Thank you, Brother Tim. I will move to Tom Gilbert now. Brother Tom, are you on? Do you know why you're last? No. Well, you, you're you're the most uh, the west. You're the closest to Seattle of all those brethren. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you been out here before? Um, I was anticipating that question. I guess I can say we've Janice and I have been out there five or six times. Uh, at least four of those for a convention. Okay, did your work ever bring you out here? Yes, it did. In fact, I probably was in, uh, spent a lot of time in Cannon Beach, Oregon before you actually lived there. Okay, I, I, and this had to do with the Lewis and Clark? Yes, uh, part of my work with the National Park Service for 17 years, I was the superintendent of the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail. Wow. So you know that we live pretty close to Ecola State Park. Do you Absolute. know what Ecola means? Uh, <laughs> it's been a few years. Um, okay. It means whale. Okay. I was going to guess that, but... When Lewis and Clark came here, they saw a, wheel, uh, a whale on the beach, and there it's got its name there. So, so what language is E. coli meaning whale? It's some Native American language. Okay. Yeah, probably the Clatsop Indians, maybe. Okay. Yes, because we are Clatsop County. So how is Sister Jan and how are the boys? Well, Sister Jan is sitting here next to me, though I'm a long ways away in Yellowstone National Park right now. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, Jan is fine. Around. Yeah. She... Uh, she, she's uh, feeling a great uh, deal of relief because uh, she recently finished and submitted the manuscript for a book she's been working on for many years. Okay. Can you give us a hint on the title? Um, <laughs> tell me the title. I'm drawing a blank. G give me a chance. It's a, it's a book about uh, information for people who have disabilities or people who have family members with disabilities and provides all kinds of advice and advocacy for navigating the way through life and what to expect. Okay, that's a, sounds like it's gonna be a bestseller. Well, she's not necessarily trying to make a fortune off of it, but to help others by writing the yeah, book. Good. So, now, um, You bring up books and it was actually something that I wanted to ask you about one of the things that I've always appreciated about your lessons is that you're not, you personally are not afraid as a teacher, Bible student, of quoting relevant references, ideas from authors outside of the traditional Bible student sources and fellowship. And I hate to use trite expressions, but the one of outside the box to me fits for you because you think and you you make us think. So tell me about Tom Gilbert, the book reader. <laughs> what do you read? You know, a, a variety of things. Um, uh, titles like um, that, that, that attract me or um, the, uh, you know, two of my 
one of my favorite books outside of truth literature in the Bible um, is a book entitled, What's So Amazing About Grace? We sing Amazing Grace. And uh, my dad recommended this book to me. And the title uh, immediately captivated me. And, um, uh, and that book uh, really opened my eyes to not only what God's grace is, but also how it should find its expression in our lives, in our dealings with one another. And, and that, if, if you took a survey of what I often speak on, it's, it's how do we live our lives and how do we interact with other people in order to be a blessing and cause no offense. Well, I remember one of your discourses that quoted that book. I remember it very clearly a long time ago. And, um, so, and another book that, that uh, the same author uh, uh, wrote um, that I read recently uh, was a follow-up to that. And uh, I, I may quote from that in, in one of my presentations this weekend. I'm not sure yet. But the title is Vanishing Grace. And he is talking in that book about how the concept of grace is falling away in the Christian community by their judgmentalism and condemnation of people who are different from them. I found that book very powerful as well. I appreciate that. And uh, looking forward to your service. And I um, want to thank all the five speakers. The only thing I failed to do in this uh, interview session was uh, turn on my timer. So <laughs> I have no idea how we've how long we've gone. But uh, God bless you all, all five brothers. And uh, we're now going to go back to our part two of the music. And um, we're going to start by going to France. And we'll join a convention in, in 2019. And after that, we're going to have Brother Daniel Coletta sing for us from Germany, a wonderful song in German from the, again, from the Bible student hymnal, Zion Leader. And the title is, I have seen the throne of God. And the translation will be on the, on the screen. Then we'll have an American song sung by an American group of men from the General Convention in 2018. And we will close with three songs from the 2018 International Convention. Uh, the singers were from all around the world, as far away as uh, from the West Australia, the East was the Ukraine, the South, uh, Romania, Moldova from the North, Poland, France. Um, the first of the songs will be sung in Portuguese in honor of the attendees at that convention from Brazil. The second song will be Italian. Uh, in honor of the attendees from Italy and in honor of uh, Jer Jerry Wessel's Italian heritage. And we will close with a spirited American gospel song that will be sung in Polish. So
nous baptise au nom de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ par sa mort. Oh uh-huh. 
Thank you.